We sit here and joke about the paranormal. We say currently science shows that the paranormal can exist. We say these jabronis on these shows aren't doing science. But what if I told you that not too long ago, people attempted to study the paranormal scientifically? Well, it's true. And it started with a man named J.B. Ryan in the 1920s. And this is what we're going to look at in this PSA short. I must give J.B. Ryan credit. He faced an uphill battle. He wanted and tried to test the paranormal scientifically. He wanted to be taken seriously by his peers and other scientific disciplines. He made sure his testing was sound and his research flawless, but he still failed to make headway with the scientific community. Sure, he had a few notable scientists given the time of day, but on the whole, he was rejected. To be fair to Ryan, he wasn't hunting for ghosts or poltergeists because he thought it would hurt his credibility and it would be hard to get a ghost into a lab to test, but instead he focused on testable paranormal phenomena. Ryan didn't put much faith in the psychics. During his time, they were very popular and they did some crazy demonstrations. Most were sexual in nature. What he did focus on was telepathy. He wanted to see if a person could send thoughts to another person. One way he tested this was with the use of Zener cards. Ryan was given space at Duke University in my current hometown of Durham, North Carolina. Duke is now one of the nation's top medical facilities and universities. But in the 1930s, people influential at Duke were able to get space for Ryan to test the paranormal. He started what would soon become the parapsychology department at Duke University. Not many departments were thrilled with this, but he did find a willing participant in the psychology department. Ryan would use psychology students in his experiments. Ryan found his ideal test subject, a young divinity student named Hubert Pierce. According to Ryan, five correct guesses using the Zener cars would be random chance, and anything higher than that would be evidence of telepathy. Pierce guessed 10 his first try. Ryan would continue to test Pierce for several years, with Pierce guessing all 25 cards several times in a row. They did a distance test with Pierce in one room and his tester across campus in another and conducted over 1,850 trials, scoring more than chance with each one until one day Pierce just stopped coming because his girlfriend broke up with him. There would never be another subject as good as Pierce. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, let's take a closer look. At first, Ryan used cards with numbers on them, and his first tests were on children at a summer camp. He would hold the card in his hand, stare at it, and then would ask the children to write the first number that came to their mind. Over 1,000 trials, and none scored high enough for follow-up investigation. Next, he tried undergraduate psychology students with Dr. K.E. Zinner. Here, they would guess letters of the alphabet or random numbers sealed in an envelope. The best guesses were close to chance. Random guessing. Not to be discouraged, the Zinner cards were created. 25 cards consisting of five symbols, a circle, star, rectangle, wavy lines, and a plus sign. This gave the guesser a one in five chance of getting the right symbol, increasing the odds of a hit. Not so shockingly, the guesser increased the hit rate, but most regressed to the mean after multiple tests, which was five correct guesses. So what of Pierce? We don't know explicitly how he guessed so many correctly, but from what I can tell, the testing protocols were not very strict. Card counting, edge reading, which this means the edges of different symbols were cut differently and he can tell, to the cards being see-through, all played a part. Was trickery involved? Collusion between the sender and receiver in these distant tests? Unconscious tells. We don't know, because Ryan wasn't very forthcoming in his testing procedures in his published articles. But what I do know is that when testing protocols were very strict, those tested did no better than chance on average.
There is so much more to this story, and it is truly fascinating. There's also a lot of math that calculates odds that is too complicated for me to fully understand. What we do know is this. Ryan wanted to be scientific about his testing. He wanted to be taken seriously, but he fell short. He faced criticism from all angles, and rightfully so. His testing protocols needed to be tightened up, and when others tried to replicate his results, they fell short as well. This is a good cautionary tale to any would-be paranormal investigators. Make sure your tests are thoroughly controlled and make sure you are aware of as many variables as possible. And maybe only then will your results be taken seriously. Thank you for listening to this Paranormal Skeptic Academy short. If you like what I do, please leave me a review on iTunes and Stitcher. If you want to support the show financially and receive extra content on a monthly basis, you can sign up to be a member starting at $1 a month at patreon.com slash PSA or at paranormalskepticacademy.com slash membership. Like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash paranormalskepticacademy. Follow me on Twitter at cweb619 and subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pskepticacademy for full video versions of each episode and YouTube-only bonus videos. Also, you can download each member-only bonus episode for $1.50 at paranormalskepticacademy.com under downloads. Thank you for listening to this Paranormal Skeptic Academy short, schooling your favorite paranormal investigators.